82 finger hair venomous video number three <coughs> excuse me I got a frog so today I'm going to be talking about uh, since it's a venomous video I got to be venomous about something I do not like certain aspects about the DIY community that means the people I don't want to slag off anybody personally so I'm going to talk about behavioral trends that I've noticed um, I was in that community and I tried to fit in and I left because every time that I said anything it, the thread would stop I know I typed too much so that was probably it but um, me going on and on about class D amps and posting video after video after video and having no one say anything for years and then uh, one of the big wigs in the forum said gee I saw this amp board on eBay uh, for real cheap pennies a lot I bet you could just build a little front end like an EQ or something and put that in front and make a little amp out of this and they were all chiming in and everyone was oh my goodness this is such a great thing and then I came in and said yeah I've been posting this for five years all of the videos that I post in that thread the 25 or 30 videos of the band playing in the woods but I tell every time I post that I talk about the new amp that I built because I constant I'm constantly building them honey would you bring me the Volvo amp when you get a chance so yeah that type of stuff uh, pros techs and experts telling me uh, flipping out on me because I admit that I use plumbers flux because I'm cheap well I clean it off I've got as when I'm done I hose the board down with uh, this is full of rubbing up 90% rubbing alcohol 90 whatever 91 I, I don't know exactly but I, I hose it down and then I take this as a brass brush from the dollar store and scrape down I run a kind of a wide like a spade bit it's the yellow thing from the Radio Shack soldering kit the yellow tool that has the bristles on the one end of the spade bit on the other end I'll run that through and wherever it stops I know I gotta melt those solders and then uh, I use a embossing tool which is a mini hair dryer if you see a woman's tool that looks like a lightsaber handle and then it's got a prickly comb on the end that has chrome and there's holes in it you get one of those and unscrew it and remove that end and you'll have a mini wand that shoots hot air out of it that you can use to heat shrink boot or anytime you need to dry something uh, I find those things at Goodwill for like when they're half price I'll get them for 99 cents or $1.99 the embossing tool is the same thing but it's smaller and they're really hot those are really nice so yeah I'll, I'll blow that off blow the excess alcohol out of it and I do both sides and then uh, scrub it and then I'll reheat those and when you're done doing that it the the back end of the board looks like a museum piece uh, somebody who's looked at my work knows what I'm talking about so people going nuts at me saying because the circuits never work when I am done and like I work with a partner I measure my resistors I I do the same thing every time and I build on Vero board I've got videos on how I do this and uh, it's pretty much almost a fail proof thing because we do this tell me a story where she goes okay I'm coming in on row two on B we've got a three and it's a, a resistor and then there's a two gap and then there's a little orangey capacitor that's a two and that means it takes up two spaces and then there's a one gap on the bottom row and so she can tell me the story meaning reading off the computer the Vero of what it's supposed to look like so using the I command or the H command to invert the image to make sure when you cut the holes on the back they're in the right spot telling me the story on that and all of that double checking working with somebody who's smart who's not in there all high off the work because you do kind of get a little bit weird when you're working you're into it and sometimes you'll make an error having somebody 
has saved my butt. I can't tell you how many times, but the point is, is that I do this goofy process, and, and through that process, we never make an error in the layout. When I worked alone, oftentimes it would be up, oh, that one is off by one, and I would have to run a jumper to fix it. That type of stuff never happens anymore. And what I'm saying is, with all of the flux that's in there and the bad soldering, whatever it is, it never works until I hose it down and scrub it and dry it off. Then it will work. So I don't know if that flux is, if it's capacitive and if it's, or whatever, it's non-insular. But uh, yeah, people that attack me for using plumber's flux, no, you're wrong. That's a pro tech and expert move. Now, I've already gone on and on blue in the face talking about my disdain for people who champion tube amps who don't really know what they're talking about. Me, I have tube gear here. I know what it sounds like. I know what tube break breakup sounds like. And I wouldn't use it for everything. It's this very specific type of distortion sound that's a one-trick pony type of sound that's fine for certain things. I know that there's all different types of tube amps that we've got some high gain tube amps inside those circuits what you're finding it's not the tubes that are giving you that type of distortion I got news for you it's a clipping diode circuit with an op amp okay so you know whether you're doing it with pedals or you're doing it inside the amp cabinet that's all personal preference me I my approach is a lot of it is based around the fact that we play outdoors so a lot of battery operated gear and I embrace modeling so people hating on me for you using modeling that's really short uh, sightedness and to all you people who haven't embraced this stuff I feel sorry for you you're missing out on some incredibly fun toys so yeah that's another pet peeve on to the heart of the subject the LM386 I hate that chip okay it feeds back it's got interference uh, the tone is horrible. Every time you get a clean patch on it, you'll hear a fuzzy distortion in the background, like on top of everything. And then the release. Like if you're a noob and you build it, you're just... Wow. Uh, 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 you know, you never stop playing. You won't notice that the, on the release, like if you hold the note, and let it fade, okay, like a mature, older player would do. If you have dynamics or uh, <laughs> notes in your playing that start and stop, if you sustain a note, that once that note is peaked, as soon as it starts, uh, the release starts. There's all kinds of interference and a crackling distortion that you hear in every note on the LM386. So all these people, you're building those things and you're just ignoring that and saying, my amp is awesome, my amp, I built my amp. And that's a whole other thing, people saying, when they build a single oscillator and saying it's my synth, I built a synth. You didn't build synth, okay? You built the simplest circuit to make a noise that exists. So let's... Just be honest. Always stop yourself and say, hold on, am I saying this to someone? Am I coming off humbly or am I coming off like I'm kind of bragging and I'm kind of full of it? So that's another DIYer trait that I try to limit myself and being like, mm hmm, like, you know, I walk on water because I, you know, don't use LM386s. I can't stand those. Every circuit that I've ever built, the Gracie, the Big Daddy, the gra uh, Earth Graphic Sound Research, Earth Fuzz, or whatever that thing is called, didn't even work. A guy had a mistake on the layout, argued with me till the cows came home when the layout is just wrong. Uh, bad layouts. Renegadrian, <laughs> you got a few of those out there. I, I appreciate everyone who does that work for me. It's great to get a Vero layout, but when it's wrong, we need to get that. Uh, so watch for it should be verified. And if you're not, if you're going to do a non-verified, I've seen some verified ones that had issues before. So, yeah, uh, LM386. No. Uh, what else? 
the uh, it's like a five knob fuzz, uh, some modern like death metal thing. I've built probably I want to say seven or eight just dirt boxes that use the LM386 because I I ordered a bunch of those chips when I got into this, not knowing that they have all these issues and. Uh, every time I built a little mini amp with that, I would try to put a fuzz circuit in there, and it would just cause so many problems, and I p was putting capacitors all over it. It was just a collection of capacitors soldered in all over it, between pins 2 and 6, on the power input, on the speaker, on the power switch, on all of the pots. It was just capacitance, a bank of capacitors. It was like the flux like in the, uh, when you opened it up, there was a Y and it lights moving, you know, 88 gigawatts. So, yeah, no, double birdie for the LM386. And I know there's A, B, C, D, or L, M, N, O, or whatever it is, the different levels that it sucks. And they always sell you the weakest one, and then you have to go back and order more from Mauser and pay all that shipping. What you want to do is, there's light at the end of the tunnel, it's called the punch amp, it uses a, a TPA 7052A. Uh, I'm not sure on that prefix, but it's a 7052A amp. I got one here, um, I put a fuzz circuit on the front of it, which, I don't know, it's got a single transistor. Um, here's the fuzz circuit. Here's the fuzz circuit flopping around over here. There's a 9 volt battery that's stuck to the speaker here. The speaker is JB welded to the cabinet. And then the actual amp is down, down in here. And there's a... Uh, yeah, it's a little doggy Jack Russell Terrier uh, lunchbox that I got the dog amp. And... Uh, yeah, that you you don't you're not gonna see any um, you're not gonna see any dirt boxes that use that chip. You have to order them. They're not as cheap as the uh, uh, you know you're gonna pay like 17 cents for an LM386. These are like maybe a buck, but man, they're worth every penny. When you find them, you're going to find them on eBay or other other places are starting to carry them now. I'm not sure if they, if Tata has them. I should have looked this up. It would be great if Tata carried those. But when you when you order these, you're going to want to get five or ten of them because believe me, you can make battery amps. They will run on a nine little nine volt battery a long time. There was people arguing about that. It's going to drain the battery right away. They're they're I think they're twice as powerful. Don't quote me on that, but. These amps are like hi-fi crystal clear quality. You could use them for music. They make great little mini amps and there's no problem with it. Plus, basically, there's just a couple of caps and the volume. There's actual pins on the, on the, uh, I think it's a, it's an eight-legged chip. Two of the pins are just for a volume control. It couldn't be a simpler uh, schematic for the punch amp. No, no, goofing around. It's just a wonderful circuit. So I hate LM386s. I cannot stand that. And as far as anything more powerful, building powerful amps, uh, I want to show you how I get these switch boxes. It'll be a computer switch box. I've got other videos like this, but I know my new buddy Clementine, check out his channel. I need to put a link in the thing. I've been putting up videos and neglecting to promote his channel. But I'm, he does a DIY thing that is got a sense of humor to it. It's a lot like what I try to do here. Uh, but we're different. And that's a good thing. And he is amazing how he doesn't really spend money on it. Or I'm spending money for everything. You know, although I try to do it cheap, and there are videos in the beginning where I was hacking stuff more. I sold reel-to-reel -reel tape decks. I sold my studio gear and got a decent amount of money back on that. I was able to buy all the components, all the Vero board and resistors and capacitors and stuff. All my parts, I invested wisely and bought just a ton of stuff. 
so that wasn't enabled me how to do that. And then I top up once a year. I'll when Tayday has the 15% off sale, I'll get some more Vero board pots, knobs, and you know maybe some chips and transistors. So anyway, you can find these switch boxes uh, for two dollars at the Goodwill, and I'll put a. This one is a really janky metal. I, this is a new version, and I really don't like this metal. They're usually a little bit thicker, but I'll put a handle on it, and then this will become a project chassis. Now, a lot of times in the beginning, I would pass these up because they were $2. I only wanted to spend $0.99, cents, and I really regret that because what they have inside of them is, and I just never thought of this, uh, these wires go into these jacks. You unsolder these real quickly, and then you have all this, I don't know, it's... This one doesn't have as much as some of the other ones, or maybe it's a little thinner, but you'll end up with like 60 pieces of perfectly, perfect length tinned wire. Sometimes it's four different colors, it just depends on the thing, and they're perfect length to fit inside a Hammond box. So, and then you've got this rotary switch. These jacks I've never been able to, uh, I, I don't reuse these, I throw these away. And there's also little piece parts that can be used as standoff nut and bolt combos, like where you spin in a VGA uh, connector. So you get all of that hardware, and the main thing is the wire for reuse, and then you can build stuff in the chassis. So a box like this, this is a stereo EQ that I built that runs off two internal 9-volt batteries. This would be like for the band running a drum machine in and then out. So this is a master volume, and then the EQ, uh, bass, mid, treble, and the battery switch to run, to throw it up to. And I know I, the reason I did that is because this is a mono co connection here, and I run it off two batteries. So I forgot how it's all wired up, but that switch is there, uh, combining everything on the one side, running up to the battery connector, and on the other side it splits off a two channel to go to two battery two. 9 volt batteries. Now, the guts to this, if you go on eBay, you can find uh, for 8 or $9 is the cheapest you'll find. They're probably 10 now. But it's a base harness. It's a little black box for active pickups where it gives you a preamp circuit with uh, treble, bass, and mid range controls for a bass guitar. So a lot of those have different specs, and I would try to pick one that had the highest frequency for the bass control, and then I could use it more for mute. It's not like super low end. It's more of a normal EQ. So yeah, it's not the greatest type of EQ, but on a budget, if you're building, I built these into amps for the front end of amplifiers. Uh, and also another, uh, when you're building like this punch amp, you could put that in front if you weren't really willing to go down that road and build a whole complicated front end or EQ, you could just buy that $8 module, put that right in front of this punch amp, and there you go. Okay, so getting into the more big boy stuff, the bigger amps, um, like this one has a uh, single in, single out fuse, and then here is a tone mender by Runoff Groove. And that has different settings to like Vox, Marshall, Fender, how you set it. And then there's a high frequency switch. I think there's a gain and a master volume on this. 6 to 26 volts, 8 ohm speakers, 100 watt mono on this one. And these are all Class D amp boards that I get from China. They're around 85 to 90 percent efficient. Some of them claim 93 percent efficient. This is, I think, this is the Nifty 50. I don't know what that momentary. Oh, that that button. Uh, you press it, and the LED comes on, and then you let it go, and then you're not running. You're not wasting battery power to run the LED the whole time. I'm so worried about <laughs> wasting battery power at the woods. So yeah. This point, okay, yeah. This one, TPA 3118, 60 watt mono. So, yeah, this is a mono amp. But this is just showing you uh, these chassis, how I've used them. This is a 15 by 2. It's got a flip up handle. 
that every time I do a video of this, I can never get that handle to flip up. But this is like one of my favorites, the 15 by 2 It'll run off any 12-volt power supply, 12-volt, 500 milliamp, up to 3 or 5 uh, amps, whatever you got. RCA input, there's a 3.5 millimeter Walkman input. This is a pot wired to ground volume on the input. And then there's quarter inch ins, quarter inch ins, quarter inch out, spring terminals, and RCA input. Uh, this says Plexitone on it, which it's not. The fuse is in the front. This is a great little amp. Uh, they all just sound fantastic. Now, here we have a two channel mixer, uh, power switch. There's no fuse on this. It says 9 to 28 volts DC or 12 volt positive. Uh, it's mono output, two ins and an out. So this is probably the uh, AMZ mini mixer, half of it, the Vero that came off of Tagboard FX. That's off to Miro, double thumbs up for Tagboard. So yeah, a little mixer, this would be so my wife could have her bass and a drum machine going into one of these mono amps and then into a cabinet. And uh, it's kind of modular, two things. I could have built it all into one cabinet, but I didn't because I've got a few of these I have a lot of these amps. There's a lot more that I, that's not being pictured. Um, here's one here that has a store-bought EQ power switch, A and B, which is a booster circuit. There's a little headphone amp on the input that goes to a three-band EQ that's a hi-fi EQ. That was $10. And the master volume is on that EQ circuit. And then I got some cabling in here. but. Here's the booster circuit is here. Um, the booster circuit is here. So the main one is the amp. Uh, over here you can see the heat sink. And then the, the red strip up at the top is the preamp. The uh, Well, not the preamp, it's the EQ. The preamp is over here. The, gr the green board is the preamp. Yeah, the green board is the preamp. And then there's f some 5 amp fuses in a little baggie because uh, I started off low and I, we blew some two amp fuses. Here's a, uh, a Huji. It's a uh, 3.5 millimeter for an MP3 for drum loops. So the this is a stereo amp. You can plug the drum loops in here or in the back there's a quarter inch plug for that. And I think it's summed mono. There's a circuit on, on, yeah, that's how that works. The, if you plug the drum machine in to this jack, it's just mono. This jack has a summer built in on it. So the right and the left are padded out with resistors, and then there's a resistor that goes to ground. It's just a circuit, so if you can send right in the left channel and they get combined into one so you hear both right and left even though it's mono so this isn't technically stereo it's um, the base the a jack goes to one channel the b jack goes to the other channel so we run a base this cabinet this amp has a base cabinet for the base and then there's a full range speaker for the drums or the mp3. So this is what we used all last year and this is a, I think it's a 50 by 2, I don't think it's a 100 by 2. This is a 7498 board and I think it's 50 by 2. Uh, and those are those class D amp boards, again those we pay, you know, Usually around five to ten dollars for those boards. I, you know, I like to pay five for them, but sometimes they're a little bit more. They're like seven bucks, and uh, I tend to build like about one every year. So that's uh, part of my collection of the amps that I built, and showing you how you can harvest these type of boxes and use them as enclosures. This here, I would highly recommend you build this. Uh, this is. Shout out to this company here, Lawrence Caduto. 
He's got some great music, too. His music is really good. He's got this song called The Wrong Way that I love. I love the video for it. So, yeah, uh, this is basically beat, beat, cunt is what I call this. It's got a decibel cut, a volume, all unnecessary. Power light, it runs on a 9 volt that I, it might be a, I think I've got some kind of a lithium ion a pack, like one of these batteries, uh, foil pack battery in there. Some kind of rechargeable thing in there. Uh, and then there's some spring terminals that have seen better days. But this just puts out a little beep, beep. And I built this and I use this all the time. Like uh, instead of troubleshooting, whenever I finish a pedal, I go beep, beep, count. And my wife gives me this thing and we plug that in and we'll turn that on. And then we test it. And if there's a problem, I will get out the signal tracer, which is a pen that has a nail in it that has a capacitor going to a quarter inch jack on a long cable. You plug that into the amp, and then there's a alligator clip for the on the on the other end. There's a quarter inch on the one end, and on the other end, it's a female. So you plug it into a, a it goes to the long cable because you're going to have that go to a test amp, and then uh, I've got a little tiny test amp here. I was going to show that off too. Those are great. Those little mini ones. They're made by. Do uh, you know where the mini amp went? They're made by like first back. It's a little like a, you know, I'll, and you could build your own, but I really like that one just for testing. It was over here. It, it must have fallen down. It was in between the, uh, yeah. So when it doesn't work, I've got this thing playing through the circuit that I just built. That's got an issue. Let's say, and in the beginning of the video, I was saying, oh, I never have an issue, but sometimes I do. And I will, instead of having like a guitar and grung, strumming it and then going over to work and grung, strumming it and going over to work, you just have this and it's just playing. No. So here is the little mini amp I was telling you about. This is an LM. Did you hear how I hit the note? That's good pitch. Not perfect, no, I'm, I'm not perfect, but, so yeah, that's the LM386 amp. Now, the bat, this is kind of a dead battery in here. This is the TDA7052. And there's an external speaker jack on this little doggy. So yeah, it's it's nice and loud. Uh, don't build the no, little little cricket noisy gem. Those are not good. Actually, double birdie salute to those. And any pedal that uses those circuits, I highly recommend these boxes if you're in an area that's conducive to resale. I understand if you if you're in an area where there isn't good resale, you're not going to run into these, but. I, I got that one that I showed you last night, the one that I wasn't hot on its construction, this janky thin one. I got this last night. So yeah, uh, here's one more. I'll show you this. This is all stuff I've shown before. The Volvo amp. He's got dancing LED strip on the side. And it's got a hi-fi EQ on it with some fender style knobs. There's four battery packs. That run, this one runs on internal. You load those batteries up, these 18650 cells that I recycle out of laptop battery packs. Just got some more of these in. Uh, so yeah, there's two, two of those batteries power the... Two of the batteries power the circuit, the lamp circuit to make the lights dance over here. This light comes on blue, and then this is uh, yellow, yellow, uh, green, 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 yellow, red, I think is what it is. There's a fuse in the front panel. And I didn't build the EQ. This is a mono. This is a 100-watt mono. Uh, this is a TPA3116D2X2 uh, amp board here. Um, these are good, good. 
I was kind of really on the fence about those at first. I thought, oh man, you know, but I, I haven't had any problem with them. Let's see, I'm, I'm shining on the that heat sink that you see there. That's on the that's on the EQ board, but next to it over here is the amp. That's the amp. It's, I know this lamp sucks. I'm sorry, but yeah, if you're interested in that, there's a whole nother video where I go on and on and on about this amp. But uh, I, I like this one. There's a little button here that you press, and it tells you the voltage. Uh, it'll say 16.83 when it's full, and then when you get home, it says 16.8. Oh, after, I don't know, six, eight hours of playing. So they're really efficient. They're really unbelievably efficient, these batteries. And this is rated at 100 watts. I know everyone's going to go... It's a six ohm cabinet. You're not giving it. You're only giving it 16.83 volts. Where do you get 100 watt? Okay, it's one watt. Sorry, I lied. Get the f off my channel. All of you like little nitpicky guys. I did, the only reason I did any of this was to be respectful to my neighbors, so I could push air, so I didn't have to have sweaty cups on the earphones and sitting on a stool not being able to move around so I could go out and have the wind in my hair and push air through a speaker. That's why I did all this. I didn't do it so I could be like my amp that I built. My, you know, mini amp head. You know, like, just like I'm so cool because I did all this. No, I'm not. This was all just unbelievable simple ordering the stuff from eBay hacking it into enclosures that I get for cheap because like again something like this is going to cost like between seven and eleven dollars for this box with the delivery Pro probably like twelve bucks for this little box and then I can for a dollar ninety nine I can get this you know and that has the wire inside of it and blah 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 so it ends up working out good for me, and I'm so lucky that I was born when I was to have all this technology be available and have it be affordable enough for me to do it. But the people in the community that are close-minded, like this, this punch amp is such an improvement. That LM8386 has been around for so long, and everyone worships that chip, and they're all talking about their my amp that I built, and it's my, 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 and my Les Paul sounds so good through my amp, all that possessive type of stuff. I I try not to be like that. I try to be open-minded, but then I know I'm probably coming off like a real prick. I'm like, like how much better my stuff is. No, none of this is mine. I didn't design any of it. That's who all the smart people that get the credit. I was just following the numbers, looking at it, and half of the time, I'm wrong. I've got my wife telling me, no, 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 no doesn't go there. <laughs> so I don't deserve any of the credit. I was able to just get by and scrape this stuff together by doing it over and over and over and over and then in the mid 90s, late 90s, a guy, a plumber, I tell the story over and over again, Willie the plumber, do you use flux when you solder? Let me ask you a question. I said no. And then he was like, go oh, get your shit. And I had to go get my soldering stuff and bring it back because we live next door, and I just used to hang out with them and you know have a couple of pots. And he produced this. He was a plumber. He produced this tub of Harvey's plumber's flux and did this demonstration, trying to get the wire to stick, trying to get the solder to stick with it and without it. And I saw the solder go whoop when he used it, and I just my eyes bugged out. And he gave me that first tub of plum Harvey's plumber's flux. And since I got that, everything that I built with the Plumber's Flux, because I, like I said, I remove it, I scrub it off. I hit it so many times, I clean it with alcohol. Um, everything that I've ever built with that, going back to that point, that stuff, all of it still works. Okay? The stuff before that, I can't say that for it. It's not as good. So, you know, if we're going to be venomous, we have to look at the positive side of things. And for me, I'm not going to pay $7 for a little tiny pen of electronic Protec and Expert Flux and have my little pen so I look cool with it and get my you know proper thing. 
I've got a cup, a big, like a juice glass full of this paste, and there's all these little sticks sticking on it, like WD-40 straws with little stainless steel needles stuck in the one end, and I pull that stuff out on the needle and wipe it on everything that I'm painting, everything that I'm soldering, I'm painting like a paintbrush with the solder, and then melting that with the iron, and then coming in with the solder. So that's my secret, how I get everything to work. I've shared this over and over and over and over and over until I'm blue in the mouth. Every time I try talking to people about it, they go, my solder already has the flux in it. So that's great for you. Good luck with your project. I use flux on everything. I, I'm silly with it. It's flying. I'm, I've got it in my mouth, ears, nose, and rectum. I love it. I love this stuff. The cat is covered in it. But that's just the way that I do this. And I really don't, again, I really don't appreciate people going, nah, nah, to every piece of gear you bring up to them because I think that you haven't tried it. I think most of the time, the only thing that you're going to say is a good pedal is what you have on your board right now. And that type of closed mining, like, have you ever really played through that thing? And I see this all the time. The only thing that's any good is what you have. And that type of, that's just dishonesty. This goes back to the other video that I made about telling the truth. So I try to not be like that. I try to, when I recommend stuff, I say, well, this is what worked for me. This is what I like. But you got to keep in mind, you've got different gear. You've got different tone. You don't like the same tone as me. You know, we're all different. So, uh, again, don't ever take too far for granted what somebody's telling you to do. Like, I'm recommending you all this stuff. This is just what I found that works for me. Uh, when it comes down to the cut and dry thing, like the LM386, and I'm telling you it's a bad component, that if this problem with the release, if you really start looking in and reading the comments, which I do, I read all of the comments. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna follow through and spend the money and time to build something, I read everything. And you'll see that there are people addressing these issues if you really get into depth, that I'm not the only one talking about it. Okay, there will be one guy out of every 50 that goes, every circuit I ever built with that chip sputters on the decay and I can't, I won't build with it anymore. So, and then everyone else is going, dude, this is awesome. I'm going to be the next Anthony Zvex. I got to get a funny hat to wear to Nam because I'm going to be a, you know, I'm opening up a pedal company, J, J, you know, Chucky Beaton's effects. CBFX.com, you know. And all of those people, none of them ever make any money. They'll maybe sell a couple to their friends. But um, that type of I'm selling stuff, so I'm going to lie online. I'm going to put up bad information and hoard. The, you know, that's not DIY. That's just the opposite. And there's, there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of that. That's one of the reasons that I bailed. The other reason I bailed on that community was every time I posted, the thread would die. And I realized I talk too much, I type too much and all that, but that's just who I am. You know, I tell the truth. There's no emoji for me to express everything that I've learned. That's going to take some time for me to share with you what, whatever it is I've got on my mind. So, yeah, Venomous Video 386, double birdie, get the out of here. Ain't going to build with that chip. All of the Class D stuff, double, double, and salute. Excellent. 90% efficient? Are you kidding me? Yes, sir, I'll take another. So, I think in the future, you're going to see more and more Class D stuff. Um, yeah, tube, 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 tone, and all that. Get out of here. There are manufacturers, Quilter, all of the Quilter stuff is Class D. And yes, it stands for digital. Uh, the crate, mono block, power block thing, that's Class D, and that's old. The Vox, uh, or the, uh, what is that company? Orange. The 212, where the speakers are stacked inside of one 12-inch cabinet, that head for that, that like revolutionary base thing, Class D. The new Fender Tone Series, iTone, where it's the little girl playing the bass, 
girls are good, they play bass, you white male, you're bad. This is for African Americans, diversity in Fender, all of that with the uh, iPhone, you got your giant phone and you're typing on that when you're done with your porn. And then your amp changes, it's EQ. That is all Class D. So there's a lot of it, but they just don't mention it. They don't say it because the audiophile community and a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about that are hung up, they're the same type of people that lie about everything and they attack everyone. You use plumber's flux. <clears throat> don't listen to Petey. All of those guys, the pros, techs, and experts is what I call them. And I, this is what I've been on about for years, since I bailed out of that community and realized, like, all of those guys, a new guy would come in and ask a question, and they would just spout off this giant page, manifesto, all theory that no one could understand. And they would go, thanks, man, you, I'm going to, I learned from that, you know, like, did you? Like, I couldn't even understand it. All of that Emperor's New Clothes stuff is what I'm talking about. And so when they rolled out the Class D technology, of course it was the new Satan. Everyone hated it. No one could conceive that it sounds incredible. It sounds really, really good. And the reason is because the D stands for digital. <laughs> the D stands for digital. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Now, it's not... Uh, calm down. Again, I've said this thousands of times. There's no ADDA, like on a digital delay, you'll have a binary converter. Your analog signal comes in, gets converted to zeros and ones, goes through the echo process, comes out. In the output stage, final stage, there's a, well, it's not the final stage, but there's a DA, because uh, your signal is zeros and ones, that gets converted back. So in that dithering and jittering and all that bad stuff, we lose the frequency is not round, like you see it on a scope, it's stair steps. And the bigger those stairs, the more that we're kind of losing a little bit of the real quality of the sound. So a Class D amp doesn't have any AD or DA. The digital is, they never should have used it. They should have call, called it Class T. And then like, yeah, it's got some tubes in there. They're really, really, really little. They're unbelievably inefficient, but we boosted that with the little thing in there. Don't don't worry about that. It's not a transistor. It's not a chip. It's a tube that's flat and it's got legs on it. A lot of them, <laughs> and it's ninety. It's eighty-seven percent efficient. How did we do that? Oh, don't worry about it. It's all in the T tube tone. So. All of those people that were all hung up on their old gear when this came out, they all, oh no, get it out of here, throwing stuff at it, stink bomb, no, boo, hiss. And really, they shouldn't have done that because, yeah, it's going to sound a little different. Is it? Does it sound bad? No, it sounds excellent. It sounds really, really good. And how, how it actually works inside of the thing is there's a, I kind of just Christopher Walken that, sounds inside of the thing is a sine wave and your music gets imprinted gets joined like there's a triangle that's always the sign for an amplifier it's not uh what p diddy does so there's one thing coming in that's say your music or your input your bass if you're a little girl and you play for fender and then there's another one that's the power coming in like the the ac or the dc we'll say the the dc the power uh, for the amp. And then what comes out the other end is this, your music comes in, there's a sine wave that's that lives in the amp. <laughs> and uh, your so what comes out is this big giant sine wave that's going and your music's imprinted on that. Whoa, whoa. And then at the end of it there's a filter that removes that whoa, whoa, the, the sine wave and what you're left with is your music but it's bigger now. So that's kind of how the Class D amp works. I've explained this a hundred times. Uh, I'm doing it again because people can't be forced to watch all 500 of my videos. So that's today's Venomous video. A lot of this was just my peeves, stuff I don't like about the DIY community. And there are a lot of good DIYers out there. 
I would say here's how you can tell if you can trust a DIY person is do they sell? If they're selling stuff on eBay or if they've got a like a pd2effects.com or if it's some kind of thing like where they're coming at you like it's a legitimate thing, I wouldn't trust them. If it's like me, I've got a pile of gear, okay? Listen to Minor Tech or any of my recordings and consider that I don't have a name. It's This isn't, you know, Lawnmower Studios or whatever. It's just, I'm just me. It's a pile of gear. I don't have a studio. So that's the approach that I take with this is humility and hum being humble. And I think that that is at least one way that I can try to get people to give me a fair shake. Because my whole thing is I'm, I'm, I have this insecurity and I need people to quantify me, to uh, legitimize me. There's a word I'm searching for uh, to say, yes, you are good. Unless somebody listens to my stuff and tells me, that's good. I think it's not good. And because I'm handicapped and I can only play with two fingers, I have to work like four times as hard to be able to do what anyone else could do. So it's it's a huge struggle. So I'm like, man, I really can't come off like I'm proud about this. So I really try to minimize what I do and not make it like it's a big deal. But there's also a part of me when, I, when I've interacted with other people who... Uh, and th there are exceptions, like Pink Chibi Photon, he sells stuff. That guy is, he's a saint. He is an absolute saint. I'm not the only person that he's looked out for and paid it forward to. He lives his life like that. So, and he has a little uh, effect company. So I'm not, I'm certainly not directing any of my angst. Because I can't, I can trust that guy. He's honest. He does all of his work and posts it up online for free. And he just says, buy a bum a cup of coffee. That's what he says. So that's a really awesome way to look at it. And I'm saying generally as a rule of thumb, these pro tech and expert type of people, that's one way you can tell whether or not you can trust them, is are they fooling themselves into thinking that they're going to be the next best thing, that they're going to be wearing their funny hat at NAMM. Because those are the people that I don't have any time for. Because they're not going to be honest with you. They're going to be holding back all of their secrets because one day they're going to sell it. Me, the little secrets that I've come up with, I, do, I don't like talking about them. I will tell you in private, but I'm not just going to put it up there. And for another reason, I found that when you put stuff up there, people tear you, tear you to pieces. They'll go, they'll go and mod it. They don't, because it's... Whatever sound that turns you, that floats your boat, is not going to be the sound for the next guy. And there's also this thinking that, well, if I put my spin on it, then it's better. So I'd encourage you to always try to find your own tone in everything you do. Don't necessarily follow everything by the law. There's plenty of room for experimentation. But also listen, listen for people who are putting up warning flags if they're saying, hey. This path is not the wise path to go go down. I've gone down this path, and it's I, a lot of regret, and it doesn't end up in a good place. That's something you could heed the warning of, and that's why I'm talking today about this LM386 chip, and uh, to provide provide some sort of penance for that. I'm showing you the TDA7052 and all of the other Class D amplifiers that are so much more powerful. So again, venomous video, you take the good with the bad, but there ends up being more good. So uh, if you want to report my channel or thump, keep thumbs downing me, the, guys, the guy who did this, I'm getting more and more videos every day are thumbs down. Like, like my album got a thumbs down. And I, I really don't care about that. I really don't. I encourage you, the guy who's doing that, if you're watching this because you're so obsessed by me, it's, it's an unbelievably long video. I hope you enjoy thumbing down more of my videos. It's going to be wonderful for me to see my very first video, Fat Guy Makes Big Splash, with a thumbs down on it. So you got your work cut out for you, buddy. 
been in this video episode three. I can't apologize for the length of this video. It is what it is. And there the information in here goes back from like two thousand and nine. So it was a lot of work for me to bring all this to you guys. Take care.